and welcome to T Academy. In today's lecture, we'll learn how to do transient analysis of circuits with initial conditions. So we have a circuit here. Initially, the switch is at position one and at time t equals to zero, the switch is moved from position one to position two. And we are interested in finding out the current through the resistor R2, let's call it I2, as a function of time once the circuit is switched. So we are interested in finding out this current. So in order to proceed with this analysis, we will utilize the condition that the voltage across the capacitor, let's call it Vc, it cannot change instantaneously. So before the circuit is switched, if the voltage across the capacitor is Vc of zero minus, then after switching, let's call it Vc of zero plus, these two should be equal. And this comes from the law of conservation of energy. We know that the energy stored across a capacitor is given as 1 by 2 C Vc square. So Vc cannot change instantaneously since there cannot be a buildup of energy in the dynamic system instantaneously. So now we'll analyze the circuits in both the conditions. So this is the circuit at time t equal to 0 minus. So before the switch is turned on, we have a circuit like this. Now in this circuit, whatever the current is supplied by the source, let's call it IS, it cannot flow through the capacitor. The capacitor will behave as an open circuit. And this is due to the reason that the impedance of a capacitor which is given as 1 by j omega c. So at dc, at omega equal to 0, the impedance offered by the capacitor is infinity. So for dc, there cannot be any current flowing through the capacitor, and all of this supply current will flow through the resistor R2. So we are interested in finding out the charge stored on the capacitor at t equal to 0 minus and from here we can see that whatever the voltage across the resistor is with this polarity vr2 it is equal to the charge stored across the capacitor and this we can simply find out by voltage deviant the voltage across the resistor R2 is equal to 3K divided by 3K plus 6K times the supply voltage, which is 12. And thus we can find out the initial charge stored on the capacitor as four volts. Now let's see what happens when the switch is moved to position two. So now we have a circuit like this. Let's call the voltage across the capacitor as V of T. So now I'll apply KCL at this node and find out all the currents that are leaving this node. So let's call the current through the resistance R1 as I1, the current flowing through the capacitor as IC and the current flowing through the resistor R2 as I2. So if I apply KCL at this node, I can write that I1 plus I2 plus IC is equal to zero. Now let's write these currents as a function of the voltages. So I1 will be equal to V by T divided by 6K plus I2 will be V of T divided by 3K and 
the current through the capacitor is given as C dVC by dt and the value of C is 100 micro times dV of t divided by dt. So the sum of these three currents would be equal to 0. Now I can divide this equation by 100 micro throughout and this will give me the final equation as dvc by dt plus 5 times v of t uh, let's call this not vc but v of t so dv of, dv of t by dt plus 5 times v of t is equal to 0 now we have already looked at an equation like this in my previous lecture where I found out the time domain response of an RC circuit. There we solved a differential equation like this and we found out that the solution of the equation is of the form a e to the power minus t divided by tau where tau is the time constant. So if you haven't seen that lecture you can click the link and see how I solved this differential equation and found out the constants using initial conditions. So by substituting this response into this differential equation I can find out the value of the time constant. So let's do it t by dt times a e raised to the power minus t by tau plus 5 times a e raised to the power minus t by tau is equal to 0. So taking the differentiation I will have minus 1 by tau times a e to the power minus t by tau is equal to minus 5 times a e to the power minus t by tau. So a e to the power minus t by tau can cancel from both sides and I get the time constant value as 0.2 seconds so the unit of time constant is seconds this now I can substitute in the solution to get my voltage V of t as a e raised to the power minus t divided by 0.2 so I found out the voltage across the capacitor it is given as a e raised to the power minus t divided by 0.2 and this response is valid for time greater than 0 plus when the switch is turned on. Now in order to find out the value of this constant a we need initial conditions and initial conditions we know for a capacitor that Vc of 0 minus should be equal to Vc of 0 plus and Vc of 0 minus we found out as 4 volts so I can equate V of 0 minus which is 4 to V of 0 plus which I can get by plugging in 0 to this equation. So I will get a e raised to the power minus 0 divided by 0.2. So this comes out as a. So if I equate these two, I get the value of the constant a as 4. So now the total response v of t can be written as 4 e raised to the power minus t divided by 0.2. And since we are interested in finding out the current flowing through the resistor R2, I2 is nothing but V by T divided by R2, which is equal to 4 by 3 times E to the power minus T divided by 0.2 in milliamps. Now let's go ahead and plot this current as a function of time. So this I2 is a function of time. So I can plot it versus time. So this axis is t and here I have I2 of t. So if I find out 
the current at 0 it will be equal to 4 by 3 so the current at t equal to 0 is equal to 4 by 3 so first always find out the value at extremes so at infinity e to the minus infinity will be 0 so this will be equal to 0 so I know that the current will decay to 0 exponentially at infinity and I also know the time constants so this is one time constant this is two time constants three time constants and let's say here we have five time constants so the response will decay to steady state to almost 99 percent of the steady state value which is zero at five time constants and at one time constant the response will be 63 percent of the initial value and at each subsequent time constant it will be multiplied with a factor of 0.63 and eventually at five time constants it would be almost 99 percent of the steady state value so this is the solution of this circuit i hope you like this video if you have any other requests or something you want to learn feel free to write in the comments and i will surely make a video on it thanks a lot and see you in the next lecture